Hi everybody, my name is Rosaline. Welcome back to my channel, Back to Chubby. Today's video is not one of my normal videos, I guess. I was gonna do the weigh-in, and I did weigh in yesterday, uh, and I got really discouraged, and then I also left that footage at home on my iPad. Let me back up. I am in my parents' backyard. You will probably see some dogs running back and forth behind me here in a little bit. It's also like 30 degrees out here, so if I'm shivering, that's why. But my husband, my brother, and my parents are inside and people are playing games or watching movies or what have you, so. I'm out here with the dogs. Hi, three girls. Hi. Say hi, Scout. Hi, Socks. You guys so excited? So excited for your video. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You. Those three girls, huh? And all muddy. We came down on Friday afternoon and it's been kind of a trip. We came in for a class that I got Josh for Christmas and the first day that the class would actually meet was Friday, yesterday, and they met last night. So we got here a little bit early in the afternoon and we went to a restaurant. So I had sort of a non-scale victory that I guess has been happening for a while and I just haven't really paid attention to it. To me, there's a fairly noticeable shift from when I went into a restaurant even just a few months ago. And the question was, do you need a table? Um, they probably didn't say it like that, but I mean, do you need a table? As in, you probably need a table, right? You're probably not gonna sit in a booth, right? Like, you probably need a table. Cause let's be real, you probably need one. That's what I heard at least. They were probably very nice about it. But now when I go into a restaurant, I am back to the point where people say, would you like a booth or a table? So do you need a table versus would you like a booth or a table is a pretty big deal for me at this point. And actually being able to say a booth is fine and then being able to be reasonably certain that I will fit into whatever booth they take me to is pretty huge. So that was really good. So we got into town, we went to a restaurant, um, it's a place here in Wichita called Bella Luna Cafe, which has a lot of really Mediterranean Greek style food and a lot of really healthy options. So I just got a great big Greek salad, um, which was really good. That was a good thing. Then I dropped Josh off at his class and went clothes shopping. I mentioned in my last video that I'm having a really hard time finding clothes. So I went here to this store called Catherine's. This is not like an endorsement or an ad or, or anything. It's just one of the stores I know in Wichita has my size. A lot of the stores that carry my size do not carry my style, if you know what I mean. And a lot of the stores that carry my style definitely don't have my size. But Catherine's, I can usually find some stuff. Um, and I found a few things, but I was trying stuff on for probably an hour, an hour and a half. I was getting really frustrated. Sometimes I could fit into 28 jeans. Sometimes I needed to go back up to 30. I didn't have to go back up to 34, which was nice, but my cup sizes are just deflated now, but my band size isn't very much smaller. And if you follow me on Snapchat, then you also saw that um, I posted a picture of my apron belly, like from the side. And I still haven't been brave enough to post a video on here of like a full body picture because I just know I'm gonna end up on like a Reddit thread somewhere. I've already ended up on some pretty choice websites, so uh, I just haven't been that brave yet. Maybe when I get a little bit further, I can show a bigger difference in my body, but I carry most of my weight in my apron belly. Like, my butt is not like a great shape, but it's pretty firm and it's pretty high up there. I mean, like it's, it's perky, I guess you could say, but my belly hangs, I don't know, half a foot lower than my butt. It's terrible. So a lot of the jeans that I could fit into otherwise, like the legs would be too big around for my thighs normally, but because of my belly, I don't know how to explain it. Basically the seam on the front of the jeans is like bisecting my apron belly because it hangs so low and it makes just a weird profile from the side and like, yeah, I could fit into smaller clothes, but they still don't fit right. I mean, I'm close to 90 pounds down. I feel like I should have gone, I should have smaller clothes by now, but I don't. And there's several areas where like, I found this really cute 
blue shirt to try on, but the loose skin on my arms was really evident in it, and I don't know. I was having a lot of ups and downs the past several weeks about uh, losing weight. And like, I'll feel like I stick to everything and still gain water weight, either whether it's because of my period or just because, and then sometimes I won't do great at all and I'll lose some weight and then I get a little overconfident and I go a little bit crazy with the cheat days and cheat days turn into cheat weeks. I'm just having a hard time. So I think clothes shopping has made me a little bit more ready to start taking losing weight seriously again. It's not, well, I don't want to say that I haven't been taking it seriously, but I have not been as determined as all consumed by weight loss recently as I had been when I started. And trying on clothes was making me really frustrated. <laughs> Wanting to just, you know, go to a really nice restaurant and get something other than a salad has me frustrated. Recently, my knees have been acting up more than they have been in a while. Just terribly. Yesterday was just like murder on my knee and I don't know why exactly it flared up so much uh, worse than it has been recently. But it was one of the first days I was tempted to break my cane back out. Yeah, because I haven't used it in a few months. Point is, I mentioned also in my last video that I want to start focusing on those things that make me want to lose weight. The things that make me be like, okay, do it. Stop trying and do it. And uh, one of the things that I haven't really talked about before is this thing. This is the summer 2003 issue of Kansas Magazine. And you may not be able to tell here, it was shipped to Race Petroleum Equipment in Wichita, Kansas where I stole it from. <laughs> Ray's Petroleum Equipment was a company that my grandparents owned that no longer exists. Um, my grandparents have both passed away. But the summer of 2003 was the first summer after my knees really just stopped cooperating with me. I've actually recorded the video where I talk about what happened to my knees and what's still wrong with them. And there was a lot of crying in it. And in some parts, I felt like maybe I was just being sort of whiny and angry and indignant. So I've just never posted it. And I feel like I will re-record that someday. Because I recorded it months and months ago. And it just didn't... I don't know. The point is, I played soccer for a long time. And by the time I was 15, my knees were basically kaput. According to my physical therapist, I had worse knees than some of the 60 plus year old lifelong runners that he had dealt with. Anyway, that summer, I had already started gaining a lot of weight. So I went from being on multiple teams at once, my high school team, my AYSO team, my SESA team, uh, which is a county competitive league team. I was on multiple teams at once, practices almost every day, running a lot of the time, eating crap all the time, to not moving and just sitting still, not supposed to go up and down stairs, not supposed to walk around when I didn't have to, and still eating <clears throat> a lot. And when I would get home, our garage leads directly into the kitchen and we have one of those split level houses. So like when you're on this floor, the next floor is like half above you and the next floor is half below you. Like a, if you've seen the house, you know what I'm talking about. Point is I wasn't supposed to do stairs if I didn't have to. So I would get home and I would sit at the kitchen table like three feet from the fridge. And so on top of just um, not exercising anymore and still eating crap like while I was at school and when I got home, then I ate more. So I gained from 158 pounds, which is the weight I wanted to get back to, I think the first year that I had blown my knees, I gained 85 pounds. And then it just sort of kept going from there. Anyway, that's all beside the point. The point
point is, I was gaining a lot of weight, I wasn't moving anymore, I wasn't working out a lot of aggression that I had. Anyway, at the summer, during the summers, I was working at my, my grandparents' family business. Um, and this was one of the magazines in the waiting area. This is along a riverbank here, somewhere in Kansas, and as you might guess, the whole magazine is about Kansas. But the reason I took this is because there's this um, article in here about hiking, uh, specifically some of the best hiking trails in Kansas. Um, I love to hike, and it was one of the things I couldn't do very well slash wasn't supposed to do when my knee messed up. Um, but the main reason that I sort of fell in love with this magazine was because of this trail right here. That's part of what is called the American Discovery Trail. And it is the longest non-motorized trail in the country and it goes from coast to coast. So there is a walking slash biking trail that goes all the way across the country. It's 6,300 miles from Delaware to California. And I started thinking I would like to do that. I would like to at least walk the part that goes across Kansas, maybe after I graduated or, you know, just... At the time I was also really in love with books like The Lord of the Rings, which are essentially walking really long distances. I just really liked the idea and sort of romanticized it in my head and I was making all these plans about what I would need and how long it would take and eventually I really just wanted to walk the whole trail and do the whole thing um, either on foot or maybe on a horse anyway I took this and in my own way was making all these plans like this is what I would need this is how long it would take this is where I could stop I never went through with it um, and every time I would start to try and get back in shape after my knees went I would push it too hard and hurt myself and then sort of just continue or restart that spiral. Anyway, I've kept this magazine for 14 years now and um, I still wanna do this someday. Now, the problem is uh, if you've been watching for a while then you know just a couple months ago I started walking pretty regularly and I was trying to get in at least 10,000 steps a day, which for me is about five miles of walking. Um, and some people are saying that's too much. That's, that's ridiculous, I don't get that much in. But our doctor was saying that a normal average healthy person should be able to walk 10,000 steps a day, no problem. And to really lose weight, we should aim for 20,000 steps a day, which I wasn't doing. I was still aiming for 10,000 if that, because my average day count was probably a thousand steps um, it's a little bit more now that I'm not working from home and I'm parking farther away but it's still not 10,000 steps anyway trying to do that every day or even trying to get at 10,000 extra steps per week um, within a couple weeks I had gotten some weird new knee conditions so that every time I put my knee down on something whether it was the ground or the soft mattress uh, I had this like stabbing pain under my kneecap that went up through my leg and into my hip. The point is, I keep, I keep thinking in my mind that someday I'm going to have the stamina, the energy, the capability and time and money really to be able to walk this trail. I just haven't been able to make myself get rid of it. I mean, this is like, one of my bucket list things. And the other day, Josh had said, you know, maybe we could go to one of the points in Kansas and hike part of it, camp out for a night and walk the next part of it and then go home. And then next, you know, another month or so later, go back to the spot we had left off on and walk part of it, camp that night, walk some more and go home. So basically do it piece by piece, at least the parts in Kansas. And it was really sweet to me that he had thought of that. I don't know what brought it up for him, but I don't know that I'll ever be able to actually walk this entire thing. 
but it's one of the things I want to do and it's one of the things I don't have a body that can do right now and it's one of the things I want to work towards so I think especially over the next couple weeks I'm gonna try and find more of these things more of these things that made me say this is enough <laughs> like you gotta lose it now where it's never gonna happen or you've got to get in shape now where it's never gonna happen you're never gonna do this if you don't start right now so I think over the next few weeks I think that's what I'm gonna focus on and try and find them and pinpoint them and talk about them because um, sometimes I think talking about something or writing about something makes it real and makes you evaluate that thing a little bit more especially what it means to you so Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. This magazine that I stole <laughs> when I was like 15 or 16 um, is one of my reasons. Anyway, if nothing else, I at least want to do a 5K someday. I think that's going to be about it for today. I'm freezing. I've got some puppies that would like me to come pet them. Just go enjoy some time with my family before we go home. So, as a reminder, you guys can find me on social media with the username Back to Chubby, all one word. In the description box below, you can find a link to BetterHelp, which is the mobile counseling service I use, and the information for my PO box. So, if you want to write me a letter or send me a postcard instead of, you know, sending me a message or something, that's great too. Anyway, I hope wherever you guys are, you are safe and happy and healthy. Remember to just keep trying the best you can, and I will see you next week. Bye.